Well, what I'm going to do is talk through the different decisions in the case through the different levels um, and then try to draw some lessons from that, looking also at the um, the other big Supreme Court case on nuisance from 2014, Coventry and Lawrence. Um, but I'm going to start off with just a very brief reminder of the nature of um, the, the law of nuisance, which is a tort. Um, it is sometimes called a tort to land. Um, so in other words, the, the subject matter of the tort is uh, wrongful interference with claimants' enjoyment of rights over land. Um, in Hunter and Canary Wharf in 1997, another case that went to the House of Lords, um, it was held that because of that, uh, only a person who has a legal interest in land can sue. And the uh, required right is generally a right to exclusive possession of the land. Um, so the harm from which the law is protected by um, the law of private nuisance is, is um, diminution in the utility and the amenity value of the claimant's land. It's not specifically to do with personal discomfort to the persons who are occupying it, although of course there is likely to be personal discomfort to the persons who are occupying it. A short point quite quickly to do with the right to privacy. Now one thing that comes clearly out of the case is it doesn't establish that there's any direct applicability in a domestic private property dispute between non-government parties of the right to privacy, enshrined in Article 8 of the Human Rights Convention. Um, we've talked about why the High Court rejected that. Permission to appeal on that point was refused. Now, Mr Justice Mann did take the view that since the Human Rights Act, it was more clear than before that the law of private nuisance should protect against overlooking. But the Court of Appeal considered uh, that overlaying the common law of tort, the common law tort of private nuisance with Article 8 would distort the law to a significant degree. All members of the Supreme Court regarded Article 8 as an unnecessary complication and distraction. So I think we can say fairly clearly that it does not form part of the law of nuisance. I'll say quite a short point. Now, um, the kind of conceptual argument which underlies uh, the difference between the, between the majority and the minority in the case um, is to do with uh, whether you look at the common and ordinary use of the land by the Tate or whether you look at the kind of wider question of reasonableness. 